It was a complete revolution. Here comes this remarkable vehicle. Fast, clean, there had never been anything like it on the streets of any city in this country. At the National Tramway Museum in Derbyshire, Britain's finest collection of old trams is lovingly preserved by a team of volunteers, including Lennox McEwan. I was born in Lanarkshire and my grandmother lived in Glasgow. And we used to go into Glasgow on the bus and get the Glasgow tram out to Nana's place. And I've had a lifelong interest in trams. The tram opened up new vistas to those who couldn't afford cars or bicycles. Workers in London suddenly found they could commute from places like Croydon, when, before admiring crowds, the new marvel was unveiled in 1901. For Edwardians used to slow and smelly horse-drawn transport, this new system must have seemed like something from the pages of science fiction. We're in the period of H.G. Wells. The future was going to be marvellous and it was going to be built on science and technology. And that right at the cutting edge of the Edwardian technology was electricity. It was the first electrical age. And one of the great uh, manifestations of the presence of electricity in the society was what it did to public transport. But coming out of the Dark Ages also had its dangers. If it uh, did start to uh, pour down with rain when they were outside up the top, um, they got wet, as simple as that. One of the joys of body and travel. And uh, sensibly, nobody would put umbrellas up because they've got 600 or so volts above them, which uh, would give them a nasty fright. But the new trams were clean, efficient and cheap. And in Croydon, the system served the town for 50 years before falling victim to buses and cars. Ironically, electric trams have now returned to the streets of Croydon as an environmentally friendly solution to today's urban congestion.